We're at Sebring 2018, and we've come inside a tent because we want to look at something rather small and on a screen. I'm Dan Johnson talking with James Wiebe, who not only makes the chipper airplane that many people have been watching lately with great interest, but you have a whole instrument line, and we've done some interviews about that as well, and they're very cool little instruments that are very light and can fit in many, many aircraft, but you've now taken this one more step beyond what I just described. Yes, I have. What's the new thing you've got, James? Okay, now we're working on delivering uh, avionics in, in, in apps for aircraft. That simply means that uh, you can go to the app store, uh, download an app, run it on your iPhone, and get aviation quality instrumentation delivered to your iPhone for use in your cockpit. So what this means is you don't go buy an actual instrument. Oh, you use the that. device you've already bought and it's not just iPhone, it's also iPad. That's correct. But not every one of the products because it needs some elements inside it. Is right. that correct? Yeah, over the course of time, as Apple introduces iPhones, they've added capabilities. One thing that they snuck in with the uh, 6, which I think was two and a half years ago, was they snuck in barometric sensors. And they're good barometric sensors, really good ones. So the 6, 6S Plus, up, 7, 8, uh, 10, and uh, some of the iPads also have these barometric sensors built into them. If you have uh, a way to access the information, you can create all of the pressure-based instruments that we use. And it's ideal for both backup and also for training in an experimental aircraft. You know, they're just, they're fantastic. Plus, general aviation can use them as well uh, because it's just a handheld, uninstalled device. You're not having to mount it into the panel no, or do anything. Nothing. As we know, not only, I mean, some uh, light sport and light kit guys actually use an iPad or some, some device like that as a primary instrument, yeah. which they absolutely can do. Uh, but those aircraft, of course, don't have to go through that approval process that a Cessna, Cirrus, Diamond, whatever has to go through. In those aircraft, you can't just mount stuff in the airplane. You've got to get permission, and it's an expensive, complicated thing to do, so they just don't do it. Correct. So they've adopted iPads in particular in huge droves and started out using products like ForeFlight for navigation. That's great, yes. but they can do more than that, and you're tapping into that more than that stuff. Exactly. So the first application that we've introduced is a what I call a precision altimeter. Uh, it shows with a with an aviation style altimeter dial your current altitude. Uh, you can change the pressure setting like a normal altimeter. We've bundled in as well a vertical speed indicator, and then depending on what optional instrument every Every one of these iPhones has that, but if you add an optional Bluetooth dongle, which is just 29 bucks, you can pull up humidity, density, altitude. Is that right? Yes. Oh, wow. Horsepower ratio. Uh, it's just, it's really pretty cool. You get now seven us, or eight you functions. You've got one right there, I think. Show us what you mean by this dongle, uh, which is a component part that plugs into a phone. So yeah. turn it around a little bit for us there so we see what it is. Yep. And so how does this connect to a phone or an iPad? Bluetooth. Okay, you so you don't really Bluetooth. attach it at all. It's nope. just as nearby. That's Bluetooth correct. is good for about 30 feet away. And then you get all that other stuff yes. out of it as well. That's correct. Quite remarkable. Excellent. Okay, so now let's uh, talk a little bit about, well, let me do this first. So I say, hey, man, that's really cool. Uh, altimeter now and more to come, I'm guessing. Uh, so I, I take out my iPhone and I go to the App Store and uh, right there in the app store, I'll see, there it is. Precision altimeter, it says. Now, I got there. The easy way to get there was just do your name. I did a cheat, yeah. So, James Weeby, and that's one way to get there quick, or I'm guessing you could put in precision altimeter. Precision altimeter works just as well. And, you know, this is 20 bucks, but think about that. An aviation instrument for 20 bucks, and you got it with you all the time. And you already had it, more or less. You basically already had it. You just didn't know you yeah. had it. So, there it is right on my screen. I can see it. But now we want to look at a little larger one and see how this thing actually works. Would sure. you show us through it? Yep, I All sure right. will. To get to the app, you need to navigate to the App Store on your iPhone or your iPad. Once you're to there, uh, there's two different search terms you can use. Uh, an easy cheat is to use my name, James Weeby, Whiskey India Echo Bravo Echo, and it'll pop up. Or, of course, use the name of the app, which is Precision Altimeter. Either one will pull up the app. If you don't see it, you either have an incompatible iPhone or you've not enabled iPhone apps on your iPad. A lot of people have had trouble finding it simply because they didn't realize they weren't searching for an iPhone app on their iPad. 
Yeah, we're using uh, my iPhone here for this, but of course it works the same way. However, yeah. uh, Apple sets up iPads to use iPad apps. Or iPhone apps. But you you need to know to select that difference. Correct. So a lot of people probably already know that, but we've kind of think, yeah. I think we've clarified that. So after you download the app, then we go look at what the screen looks like. So yep. let's switch now to a little larger format. We'll use James's iPad mini so you can see what this is going to show better. <coughs> All right, so now uh, we've imagined that we went and downloaded the app, and here it is on James's iPad Mini. Of course, this will work on some other iPads, too, mm -hmm. and you can find out more when we get to the web address for you, which ones exactly and stuff like that. But meanwhile, go ahead and show us around what we're seeing here now, James. Sure. Uh, we've got a classic altimeter set up here. Uh, for the sake of clarity, I set it up with a single needle for your feet. Uh, the uh, yellow thing is your standard 10,000-foot bug. And then we have a digital indication of altitude here. For the uh, purposes of handling our international friends, we're showing both millibars and inches simultaneously. If we hit the plus button, they both go up. If we hit the minus button, oh, I see. They, they both adjust go down. together. Okay, so cool. So you don't have to select European mode when you uh, use it over in Europe. And Beautiful. You can download it over there. There's a help screen anytime that you want. It has all the instructions for what you need to know. It includes a little bit of background as to what's going on with the different functions. Then uh, this box, this box over here in the corner shows our Bluetooth status. This is our Bluetooth dongle. You don't have to use that. If you don't use it, you get altitude all the time. You get pressure altitude all the time. You get vertical speed, dial and digital all the time. But the Bluetooth dongle opens up humidity, temperature, dew point, and density altitude. It uses a true calculation incorporating both temperature, pressure altitude, and humidity to produce density altitude. Ah, okay, so, so you're going to get a direct density altitude readout correct. if you have the dongle which That's supplies correct. that extra data. And one little bonus thing that I And this you said there, is just an inexpensive item, so... 29 it, bucks. Okay, great. Uh, a bonus item is, is that I give you a horsepower ratio. This doesn't tell you oh. what horsepower your engine is developing. It tells you your maximum available horsepower relative to standard conditions at sea level if your engine was operating at full power. So we here, here so we are in Florida. So as you climbed up very, very high, it's that percentage show. number would go down. Yeah. So here we are at sea level, and it's kind of a warm day, not hot, but we see that our max horsepower is 96%. Mm -hmm. If we were up at 7,000 feet, this would probably be in the mid 80s. Okay. And if we were up at 10 to 12,000, it would sink into the high 60s. Okay. But you know? that's very useful. I mean, almost nobody knows that. We all know we lose some power. This will tell you but exactly. But rarely do we have that yeah. data readout anywhere. Yeah. Certainly not on our iPad. And the and the the caution is is this isn't what your engine is producing now. This isn't what your engine is producing if it's broken. This is what your engine is producing if it's working properly at full throttle. Uh, at the uh, indicated altitude. Sure, right. It's still giving you a value judgment saying altitude yeah. changes engine performance. Here's an indication of how much. So, for instance, when I flew out to Angel Fire earlier this year and I was up at 10,000 feet, it would have shown me that my maximum power was in the neighborhood of uh, high 50s to low 60%. Is that right? Okay. There's a cautionary tale for right. you. Right, right. It's like, think, buddy. Well, but you got the information. Now, that doesn't mean people always act right, but without information, it's hard for them to act right even if they try. So that's this is correct. a great resource. Yeah. Another thing that's fun to point out, you can see that this is flicking between 35 and 36 and 37. You're, it's a windy day today, so there's a lot of variation ah, so in the pressure. So we're, we're sensing the pressure differential it just truly, in those readouts. It is that sensitive. You can walk up a flight of stairs and just watch it increment up by is single right? feet increments. Cool. Yeah. And so I what like a great it. extra instrument to have in your aircraft with you. And if you have your iPad or iPhone of the correct description, you've already got that. And if you add this dongle to it, then you've got, got all the rest of this information. That's correct. So that's quite a nice feature there. And you're planning to develop yeah. more products for I, this application. In huh? general, I think this is the future of uh, low-cost aircraft instrumentation. Beautiful. This Love doesn't it. replace panel instruments but this is the best adjunct because it incorporates, there's going to be other functions available. Uh, uh, I believe that there's going to be inexpensive uh, headings and things like that, all based on leveraging low-cost, high-performance displays, you know, droids and uh, iPhones and iPads, 
along with inexpensive coming down the road uh, Bluetooth and wireless sensors. Makes a so lot I of think sense. This to is me. the future. This is a device you already have, probably, yeah. or one like it. And so, therefore, all you've got to buy is the app. Yep. Which that's is right. uh, for this particular app, it's a 1995 app, and you've got yourself an altimeter. Off and running. And for another $29, you got all that extra information. That's one of the cheapest instruments yeah. you'll ever buy. I like running it in a car. You can see literally as you're going up and down, and you get training too. You learn to feel just how fast up and ah, down yeah, you're you going. You begin to sense it because you're getting feedback. So, if you want to get an idea, you know, student pilots or whatever, you can also learn the instrument on the ground without having to be at the True, cockpit right, dial. Right. Well, thanks for the tour of the uh, capabilities of the iPad with your app on it. Oh, by the way, there you can see it goes sideways as well, or landscape mode, they call it. And uh, where do we find you on the web to follow up with this? We went over how you get the app, but if people have more questions or they want to follow what ha happens in the future or other things, where do we send them on the web to find you and your instrument? Progress. Sure. Uh, RadiantInstruments.com is where we're featuring our Radiant apps. Uh, we also own uh, Be Light Aircraft. You can get there always from Be Light Aircraft. And for the aircraft link, chipper.aero, A-E-R-O. Okay, there you go. That's pretty much all the connection points you need for that. You can find more about James Weeby and his various products and lots of other affordable aviation on ByDanJohnson.com. Thanks for joining James Weeby and myself here at Sebring 2018. Thank you. Thank you.